My brothers and sisters, as Muslims, as human beings, no words can describe the horror and the despair that we experienced as we watched last week's events unfold in Paris. More than a hundred innocent French people from different religious backgrounds and ethnic backgrounds were killed. During such times, we as the greater community, the community who chooses to live together with our different beliefs, with our convictions, we must maintain our strength and our solidarity and face such crimes against humanity as one body and in one voice. We must draw from our collective wisdom and uphold the universal values of justice. And it is important for us to come together in prayer and in unity. I ask us all to pay tribute to the victims and their families. Let us keep our hearts and minds aware of the suffering at the bloody hands of terrorism that these people are facing. So let us keep in our hearts and minds those who are suffering at the bloody hands of terrorism all over the world. My brothers and sisters, we know very well that the killing of any innocent person, man, woman or child, Muslim or not, is strictly forbidden in Islam. The incident that took place in Paris was un-Islamic in every single way. Attacking innocent civilians, whether in Paris, London, Gaza, Beirut, Syria or anywhere else is completely unjustified. And we know that the Quran is clear on this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran al-Kareem, min ajli dhalik, katabna ala bani Israel, annahu man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafs, aw fasadin fil ard, fakaannama qatala al-nas jami'a, wa man ahyaha, fakaannama ahyaha al-nas jami'a. If anyone kills anyone, unless it is for retribution for murder, or in retribution for spreading some sort of corruption in the land, it is as if he has killed all of mankind. While if he saves a life, then it is as though he saves the lives of all of mankind. And the Prophet ﷺ was clear in the hadith, the sound tradition which is found in Bukhari, that اجتنبوا السبع المبقات Avoid and stay clear from and save yourselves from the seven things that will surely destroy you. And one of those seven things that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions in the hadith is قتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق. Avoid the seven things that will surely destroy you, and from amongst them is killing an innocent person. So, for Muslims, there is an added tragedy to this horrific event. These killings were carried out in the name of Islam, and this has. Added to the already heightened scrutiny directed at Islam and Muslims by sections of the media and certain sections of society. But I am confident, and we should all be confident, that many Londoners and many good people of our country will continue to express their solidarity with their fellow Muslim citizens, with you and I. And we have seen this being documented on social media, where good people have stood up in solidarity with their fellow Muslim citizens in the face of hate. Because the good people of our country know very well that the actions of disunity, the actions of disharmony will only lead us to where those people who want to create further discord amongst us want us to be. They stand together in defiance against a systematic stigmatization of the Muslim community because they understand that Muslims are no different from anyone else. They are hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as everyone else is. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? We too want peace, safety and stability. But there is no denying that this incident has once again opened up certain sections of the media to use these unlawful killings as a way to discredit Islam and Muslims. Muslims are being told to, for example, march through the streets of London with placards saying, not in my name. 
and they are being told that they are not doing enough and they are doing very little in the public to express solidarity with the victims in Paris. But the question is, were similar calls made to Christians when Anders Breivik killed 76 people in Norway? Or were the same calls being made to atheists when Chris Harper executed young people on the basis of their faith in an Oregon community college in the United States of America? Yet, we see that when the perpetrators are said to be Muslim, the rules seem to change. As the pigs in George Orwell's Animal Farm said, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Are these sections of our society pushing a skewed understanding of equality onto us? An equality which threatens to create more fault lines in our peaceful multicultural society. And it is without doubt, my brothers and sisters, that we are going through an emotive time, both ourselves, Muslims, as well as non-Muslims. Therefore, we need to be sensitive. We need to be sensitive, we need to use appropriate language when discussing the issues. So in conclusion, I leave you with the following three points. The first is that the killing of innocent people, whether that be in Paris, Baghdad, Kabul, or whatever else it may be in the world, by ISIS or by unmanned drones, is totally unjustified. The protection of all human life is one of Islam's highest goals. We should feel sympathy for all innocent people, wherever they may be, who are killed by the violence of terror. And like I said, this doesn't matter where it takes place in the world. Number two, these attacks have only become common in the last 15 years. Whereas Muslims have been living in Europe for hundreds of years or for a very long time without any terrorist attacks being perpetrated. And the Muslims of today have the same beliefs as the Muslims of the past with regards to salah, prayer, the daily prayers, fasting in Ramadan, hajj, or belief in the broad concept of jihad. Number three, we need to work with others to help break this vicious cycle of terrorism and war. Let us think carefully over the context and the political reality behind these acts of violence. Because if we decontextualize these crimes, it will not solve our problem, but it will only exacerbate and worsen the already dire situation. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this blessed day. And I urge each and every one of us to stretch our hands out before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty Creator, where our du'as are readily accepted, meaning on this blessed day. And let us continue to pray for peace, for salam in the world. Let us continue to pray for safety and understanding. And let us not forget the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks, you know, uh, mentions in the Quran al karim where he said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا That we have made you a justly balanced ummah, that you may be witness over mankind, and the messenger be a witness over you. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين ويا نجاة التائبين